Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Please remember to like and subscribe so that you're kept up to date with everything that I do. Today I'm going to be doing two past paper grade 11 questions on quadratic number patterns. I'm taking them directly from the GDE past papers and you'll be able to see the questions on the screen. For this lesson, you need to remember the quadratic formula as well as how to factor out a trinomial. If you're unsure, don't worry, it'll come up on the screen. If we look at our first question, we've given the quadratic pattern 244, 193, 148, and 109. It tells us in the question that it's a quadratic pattern, so we know that it's going to have a constant second difference. So we're going to start by determining our differences. So remember to determine your difference, it's term 2 minus term 1. So 193 minus 244 is negative 51. 148 minus 193 is negative 45. And 109 minus 148 is negative 39. Now to get our second difference, we're going to do the same thing again. So minus 45 minus minus 51, which is the same as minus 45 plus 51, gives me 6. And we have minus 39 minus minus 45, which is also 6. The, question, the first question does say write down the next term in the pattern. So I always like to find the first difference and the second difference before getting the next term, because that way, firstly, it's set up for your finding the nth term. And secondly, it just makes it that much easier to get the next term, because I know that I'm now going to say negative 39 plus 6, which would give me my first difference, which would be negative 33. Then I know that I would say 109 minus 33, which would give me 76. So there is my next term. It's the number 76. All right, the next question says determine the nth term of the pattern. All right, now to determine the nth term of the pattern, remember I have done a video on this. We are going to circle the first term of each of these values and we remember our formulas. So it's 2a at the bottom, 3a plus b in the middle, and a plus b plus c at the top. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite these equations. So I have 2a equal to 6. I have 3a plus b equal to negative 51. And then I have a plus b plus c equal to 244. So if 2a is equal to 6, to isolate the a, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So therefore, a is equal to 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Then I'm going to take that a value of 3, and I'm going to put it in place of the a value of 3, plus b is equal to negative 51. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus b is equal to negative 51. So therefore, b is equal to negative 51 minus 9, which is negative 16. For my last equation, now I'm going to take my c value, which is 3, plus my b value, which is negative 60, plus c, and that's going to equal 244. So 3 plus minus 60 is negative 57 plus c equal to 244. So therefore, c is equal to 244 plus 57, which is 301. So when I write out my formula or my nth term, tn is equal to, we remember that our quadratic formula is tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c. So a is 3, so it's 3n squared plus bn, but b is negative 60, minus 60n plus c, and c is 301. So now we have tn is equal to 3n squared minus 60n plus 301. The next question says, which term of the pattern will have a value of 508? So we take our equation, tn is equal to 3n squared 
minus 60n plus 301. All right, so now we want to know which term number will have a value of 508, which means that that 508 replaces the tn. So 508 is equal to 3n squared minus 60n plus 301. All right, so now what we're going to do is we are going to solve for n because we want to know which term number has a value of 508. So now we're going to solve for n. So in order to solve for n, we're going to solve it like a normal quadratic equation. To solve a quadratic equation, we take everything to the one side, we equate it to zero, we factorize fully and we make each factor equal to zero. So I'm going to take the 508 across, so the 3n squared stays the same minus 60n, then the positive 301 stays the same. The 508, when it goes across, becomes negative 508. So now we have minus 207. All right, so we have 3n squared minus 60n minus 207. Now you can see that the n has a coefficient of 3, so we want to just check that we cannot divide everything by 3. Remember, because 0 divided by 3 is still 0. So we're going to divide everything by 3, so we'll have 0 is equal to 3n squared divided by 3 is n squared. Negative 60n divided by 3 is negative 20n, and negative 207 divided by 3 is negative 69. So now I'm going to do this one using normal factorization. And then in the next one, I'll use the quadratic formula. All right, so if we are doing normal factorization, we would look at our third term. Our third term is negative 69, which means that my signs are going to be different. One's going to be a plus, one's going to be a minus, and that I'm subtracting the factors of 69 to give me my middle term, which is a 20. So I'm just going to quickly list out the factors of 69. Now, the factors of 69 are 1 and 69, and 3 and 23. Now, which of those two sets of factors, when subtracted, are going to give me 20? That's going to be 3 and 23, which means that my one bracket will have a 3 in it, and my other bracket will have a 23 in it. Now, the n squared factorized becomes n and n, and then I just need to decide on my signs. So the bigger factor needs to have the middle term sign. So the middle term is a negative, which means the bigger number needs to have the negative, and the smaller number has to have the positive. Why? Because they have to be different signs because it's a negative 69 at the end. All right, so everything to one side, make it equal to zero, factorize fully, and then make each factor equal to zero. So that means, therefore, that n plus 3 equals 0, or n minus 23 equals 0. So if n plus 3 equals 0, n equals minus 3. And if n minus 23 equals 0, n is equal to 23. Now, we have to remember that n has to be a natural number. So it can't be a fraction, it can't be a decimal, it can't be a negative number. So we need to therefore eliminates our not applicable solution. So the negative three is not applicable. So therefore we choose the 23. So we're going to say that therefore term 23 is equal to 508. Consider the following number pattern. We have one, negative three, negative nine, and negative 17. Write down the next two terms of the sequence, then determine the general term for the number pattern, determine the 30th term in the number pattern, and which term in the number pattern will have a value of negative 7,479. All right, so in order to get our next two terms, we're going to start with the same process, and we're going to find our first difference to see whether we're working with a linear or a quadratic number pattern, because they haven't actually said whether it's linear or quadratic. So term 2 minus term 1, minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4, minus 9 minus minus 3 is negative 6, minus 17 minus minus 9 is negative 8. Then we're going to get our second difference, minus 6 minus minus 4 is negative 2, minus 8 minus minus 6 is negative 2. So we can then see that our next two terms are going to be minus 10 and minus 12. So we can calculate our next two terms, minus 17 minus 10, 
which is negative 27. Negative 27 then minus 12 is minus 39. So there we have our next two terms in the sequence, minus 27 and minus 39. All right, determine the nth term. So in order to determine the nth term, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to circle my first term in each of the three rows. I remember my formulas, 2a, 3a plus b, and a plus b plus c. So now I'm going to write out my equations. So 2a is equal to negative 2. 3a plus b is equal to negative 4. And then a plus b plus c is equal to 1. If 2a is equal to negative 2, then in order to isolate the a, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So therefore, a is equal to negative 1. I then take that negative 1, put it in my bracket in place of my a, plus b is equal to negative 4. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, plus b is equal to negative 4. So therefore, b is equal to negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. I take my negative 1 from a, I add it to my negative 1 from b, plus c, and that's going to give me 1. So minus 1 plus minus 1 is minus 1 minus 1, which is minus 2, plus c is equal to 1. So therefore, c is equal to 1 plus 2, which is 3. So when I write out my formula, tn is equal to a n squared plus b n plus c, a is minus 1, so minus n squared, b is minus 1, minus n, c is 3, plus so I have Tn is equal to minus n squared minus n plus 3. Now the next question says determine the 30th term. So I have my formula Tn is equal to minus n squared minus n plus 3. So that means that term 30 would equal minus, in place of the n I substitute a 30, squared minus 30 plus 3. So therefore, term 30 would equal minus 927. And the next question says, which term will have a value of negative 7,479? So what we're going to do is we're going to again write out our formula. Tn is equal to negative n squared minus n plus 3. I want to now know which term number has a value of negative 7,000. 479. So I'm going to replace the term value, the Tn, with the term value of negative 7,479. All right, now to solve this, I'm going to take everything to one side, make it equal to zero. But because the n squared is negative on the right, I'm just going to take it to the left to make the n squared positive. So I'm going to have n squared, then this negative n, when it goes across, also becomes a positive n. This minus 7,479 would stay negative, and this 3 will then become negative. So I would have minus 7,482, and that will equal 0. All right, so I would be able to factorize this using my normal trinomial method. However, the number's a bit big, so I could always use the quadratic formula. Remember, you can use the quadratic formula for any factorization of a trinomial that you'd like to do. And let's just quickly uh, list out A is 1, B is 1, and C is negative 7,482. That might just help you to substitute into your formula. Remember, when you're using quadratic formula for number patterns, you must make it N. N is equal to minus B. So B is 1 minus 1 plus minus the square root of B squared, 1 squared, minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is negative 7,482. And that is all over 2 times A, 2 times 1. So now I'm just going to simplify under that third. So N is equal to minus B plus minus 
When I type this whole thing into my calculator, not with the third, leave the third sign alone. So we're going to keep it in a third. Okay. I just want to calculate the discriminant or the number underneath the third. So when I type that into my calculator, I get 29,929. And that is all over 2 times 1, which is 2. So now when I type it into my calculator, I'm going to get two answers, n is equal to something or n is equal to something else. Remember, you type it all into your calculator with a plus, get an answer, write it down. Then don't kill your calculator, just go backwards and change the plus outside the square root sign to a minus and get your answer and write it down. And the two answers you should get are 86 and negative 87. Now remember, n has to be an element of the natural number system. So if n is a natural number, that means that I eliminate the option that is not applicable, which is negative 87. So I'm choosing 86 as my answer. So I can say, therefore, term 86 is equal to negative 7,479. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it's helped you. See you soon.